you'll give me about seven minutes, I just want to break open the topic. Sabat dek abis satu yang anda resmi kafel fella kalau. About the seven mountain mandates. Sila sabat tu tararoch teleko. It's a kingdom concept. Ia mengistu hasabno. From scripture. Kamu sah kedus. And if you look in Isaiah chapter two. Isaiah semula fulat teleka temelak kata cew. Chapter two verses one through five. Tiket la kafel cew. Isaiah semula fulat kuter kamis jamro. The prophet Micah was a contemporary of Isaiah. Yeah, Nabi Yu Micah nabera. Was a contemporary of Isaiah. Kaya Isaiah siya abroy sa rin nabera. And you'll find almost the same prophecy in Micah chapter four. Hin nino de mo tumbit ba Micah sa lahi tagan yala chu mrafarat lahi. And so, this is one of the things that God is saying for this time now. Exiaber leziza man yetana grealo andu nagari hinno. A kingdom trend that God is wanting. The church to begin to understand and embrace. Beta Christian and the Tradana and the Tikabali and Mifal Lego Yemengistun Kasakasi. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and all nations will stream. To it, many peoples will come and say, "Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob." And so, what God is trying to say to us is that there is ministry out there, which he agar growth halle, and not just only ministry in the church. Beta Christiano sabi chay dal le magal growth, and we call this the seven mountain mandate. Yinin yesabat tu tararoch. So the scripture says here, in the last days, mountain of the Lord's temple, you know, Mount Zion, kingdom of God, will be established as the highest or chief or ruler of the mountains. And as this is taking place, all nations will flow up Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you understand that? So these mountains, you can call them spheres. Mountains are also called kingdoms in the Bible. I like using the term mountain for this because there's a lot of mountain theology, lots of things that happen on mountains in the Bible. So, it has been identified that the primary mind molders of society of culture are seven primary mountains now under those primary mountains there may be smaller hills or mountains or whatever but there are seven primary mountains throughout history that have molded the minds of generations. And that's the mountain of religion. So when we talk about the mountain of religion, that's not just the church mountain. Now some erroneously have called it the church mountain. But it is the religion mountain. Because on that mountain is Islam. Hinduism, Hinduism, Buddhism, yeah, Buddhism, I mean, all new age, secular humanism, new age. Are these the ones I mean, to choose? All these various competing ideologies. Yet they are you, you make, you make an account of your assets of which. But also that Christianity is on that mountain. Christian, I mean, is that are they? It can be dead Christianity, yeah, more than Christian, I mean, or alive Christianity. Hey, how Christian, I mean, I mean. But it's on the religion mountain. Gan yahay mano tararale yalla. We should shine the brightest. Gan inyan an yagolla brand nora nikaba. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus no mangad unat brand. He is the truth. Asuna unat. And so the true church of Jesus. Yeah, Jesus unat inya beta Christian. Should shine the brightest. Gol ta ma brat alabat. On the religion mountain, in the midst of all of these competing ideologies. Why is it there are some countries that will not allow churches to be built? But yet in America, America again, they want to have mosques built. 
But in their countries, in Nesuagargan, they won't allow churches to be built. Beta Christian di gana bay fakadum. But if they really believe that their religion is the truth, then why would they care about any competition? They know if they allow true churches to be built, where true believers can be lead in those meet in those buildings. And they will not kill someone who converts to Christianity. That overnight they will lose millions of people. So that's why most Arabic speaking countries with the exception of Lebanon have a law that anyone who converts to Christianity can be put in prison or killed. If you believe you have the truth, why do you have to make laws like that? So the same thing with the Hindus in Islam, I mean in India. So we, we have the one who is the way, the truth. And the life. And when we arise and shine, the light of the revelation of Christ and His glory in us. There is no question who is the truth. There is no question who is the way to God. It's Jesus. How many are followers of Jesus? Hallelujah. 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 But when we talk about the ecclesia or the church, the true church, it's not only that the, 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 the religion mountain, but we're talking about what does what does it look like the church on the mountain of government? So we talk about the religion mountain, all of these various religions shape the minds of of the next generation. Through their ideologies. They're shaping the minds of the next generation. And listen, by the way, if you don't disciple your children for Jesus, and I'm not just talking about one hour Sunday school class in church, but I'm talking about discipling your children in home Monday through Saturday. If you don't disciple your children, the world out there will disciple your children. The, the, the music industry will disciple your Music industry, Hollywood movies will disciple your children. The fashion industry will disciple your children. The fashion industry the media will disciple your children. Media And they will know more the lyrics of Beyonce than they will know a scripture verse from the Bible. There's a strong emphasis on the kingdom of God. We know how very well to speak church. Church things. But we don't know very well how to speak kingdom and kingdom things. And within a church, not everyone is going to be doing ministry in the church. We've taught about the fivefold ministry. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. But not everyone in a local assembly, assembly is going to be functioning in one of those offices in the local assembly. Probably not more than, just guessing, maybe 20%, 15 to 20%. So what do you do with the other 80%? Well, their ministry is out there. In the marketplace. Where they work. Where they do business. On the government mountain. On the business mountain. Media mountain, Media the education mountain, yeah, but, but one of these mountains. And there are those 
that have a propensity a passion for one or more of these mountains. Somebody, Somebody loves politics. And they feel God is calling them to the government mountain. Well, if they're young, we should encourage them. Take political science in university. Or economics or leadership. If you're called to the business mountain. Again, understand leadership or economics or business principles or whatever. That's where the prophetic should help in the church. Should be able to help, especially younger people, with the prophetic to help find out what mountain or mountains they might be wired for. How many people? Go to college or university. University or college, you know, get a four or six year degree. Yeah, to, yeah, so this time degree and then never to. work in the field that they got the degree in. Degree, but again, you bet, act a chance, my sir, also watch. Because they didn't have a clue what they wanted to do when they entered university. Me, yeah, to university, see, government, many more than me, for the go, I come. How much better is it if you if you study in a field in an area that you feel you're called to? Yeah, that a chance, but but that a chance, but act a chance, like ball, act a chance, no, many more, many. And so you're looking at doing ministry but doing it in the marketplace. Even the Apostle Paul had a tent making business. And until churches started to support him, planted, he was taking care of his needs by by a tent making business. He would come to a city, go in the marketplace, set up his tent making business, make and sell tents during the day, and then preach uh, evenings and weekends. Hallelujah. 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 In fact, many that are called uh, into some uh, pastoral work or apostolic work. May also have a business acumen on the inside of them. And there's nothing wrong if God has also called them to the business mountain. And to ministry. It used to be years ago. Pastors were told. No, you only have to be in, 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 in pastoral ministry. You can't do business. You can't work. And then the pastor is struggling. He can't pay uh, uh, school fees for his children. He can't take care of his family. And that's terrible. He should be able to take care of his family. And if the ministry is not providing for it, there's nothing wrong with him starting a business or working or whatever he needs to do to do that. Can you say amen up in here? Hallelujah. So this is a concept. It's been around for a while. We call it the seven mountain mandate. It's a, it's a it's like a kingdom blueprint that helps us in a much more effective way equipping and preparing people for ministry out there in the market. Even with the prophetic, we've been having a lot of teaching on the prophetic and activations on the prophetic. But your pastor is not going to give every one of you been activated a microphone to prophesy on Sunday. So unless you have an outlet for the prophetic, you'll get very frustrated. You may get mad at your pastor because he won't give you the microphone to prophesy every time you want to. Well, if what if, what if, anyway, the prophetic, God wants to use it out there. Prophetic evangelism. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Always having your speech seasoned 
uh, with uh, for full of grace and seasoned with salt. You don't always have to prophesy, thus saith the Lord. Sometimes just in a phone conversation, it turns prophetic. Just a conversation over breakfast, it turns prophetic. But it helps you to step into the destiny of someone and begin to prophesy them through just a normal conversation. Hallelujah. 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 And so, apostles, leaders of local pastors, leaders of local churches will begin to understand that my mandate is not only to equip and prepare ministers for the church itself, but to equip and power those that are called to do ministry out there on one of these mountains. And that God will have his church, his ecclesia, on top of the government mountain, on top of the, the business mountain, every one of these mountains. The question is, what does that look like? It may not look like a traditional church. Maybe 10 or 12 business leaders praying together and having a Bible study during the week. But yet they're still connected to someone that oversees them and a church where they come uh, to get refreshed and strengthened in the worship. But the church is as little as two or three gathered together. You know, in many uh, Arab countries, it is believers working from other countries there, like Ethiopians and Saudi Arabia, South Koreans, uh, Filipinos, etc., etc. They have churches of even several hundred. Uh, members meeting in, in compounds on Friday night. And through their prayers and worship, they're opening the heavens. Not only just over the church, but then eventually over that region. And then Saudis begin to get saved. Because the Spirit of God is falling on them. The same principle. Yaumer will be on these mountains. Hallelujah. The glory Hallelujah. of God is not just relegated to a church building. The glory of God can show up on the business mountain. It can show up on the government mountain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you might have different opinions about uh, Dr. Abi. I don't, I don't know a lot about your politics. But I was happy when I heard that Pente was the Prime Minister of Ethiopia. Now I know he's probably made some mistakes. He needs a lot of wisdom to, to govern a nation like Ethiopia. So many tribes and ethnic groups. And every ethnic group wants to be its own country. Can you imagine what would happen in America? If Nebraska and Kansas started fighting each other. Or if Texas, or if Texas says, we're unhappy with the president, we're, we're going to leave the United States. No, the only way that Ethiopia is going to survive in the future is that there has to be a vision for a united states or provinces of Ethiopia. That's greater than the vision someone has for Amara, Oromo, Tigre, uh, you know, Wallo, whatever. Working together for a greater vision of what a united Ethiopia can produce. It takes a lot of wisdom. And probably a lot of anointing. <laughs> to be able to figure out how to do that. But we need more righteous people. To, to climb the, the government mountain. Whether as 
someone in office or like Daniel, someone that is advising Nebuchadnezzar. You can influence a lot if you're in a position like Daniel. Or if you're in a position like Joseph with Pharaoh. So we say, ah, politics is dirty with just those dirty politicians. Believers shouldn't get their hands dirty in politics. Then all the dirty people are in politics. And we wonder why the, the country's all jacked up. We need to encourage those that are anointed and called to that 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 government mountain. How to be prepared and ready and equipped and how to understand to navigate that mountain accurately. Being as wise as a snake but keeping your heart as harmless as a dove. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many would like to hear more about this in the future? Yeah, I would love to come and teach this in the future more. Because it's God is focusing attention on. Because what happens then is it begins to bring societal transformation. Mega churches by themselves can be, can be great for winning many souls. But when you look at the statistics of where mega churches are, not a whole lot changes around where those mega churches are. Not much changes as far as poverty, as far as crime, as far as divorce, but yet you can have 10,000 people on a Sunday morning or So those people are saved and they're going to heaven but they're not disciples to the kingdom. See? We need to be, they're converted to Jesus. The king, they're not really converted to the kingdom. And understands how they are to be sons of the kingdom. To bring change out there. And this is one of the things God is focusing attention on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just wanted to drop a little bit on you today and help give you a framework of, of, of being able to understand what God is going to be putting attention on in the future. Because if you really want to see the church change a nation, then the influence from that church from the four walls has to go out there into these mountains. The influence the anointing, the Holy Spirit, the gifts, everything you're receiving in here. The wisdom from the word. Now you're being equipped of how to be able to use it out there. Bring change and transformation in society. Those that love the, the education mountain. You're very much needed. Not only as teachers, as administrators in the educational system, to make sure that the curriculum is shaping in the right way the next generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What, what do you all think about this? What, 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 what do you feel when you've heard this message? Today? I'm very much blessed. Uh, last night I was also reflecting on this. Uh, it's like uh, it gives us a framework and a blueprint that is uh, so much certain that we need to push our uh, ministry in the next seasons because the old uh, cannot take us uh, to the future anymore. Uh, we bless God for what happened in the past, but uh, in order to track the generation, the new generation, 
uh, to the ends of the world, uh, bringing impact because leadership is all about influence. Uh, we need this framework because uh, people's destiny has to be unfolded in the church. If a person's uh, destiny and calling is to the mountain of government, he need to be anointed in the church for that and move and influence that atmosphere for Jesus. And also if it is a business, then that businessman is going to impact the mission work. Therefore, this is a very important apostolic and timely message uh, for our nation. That's how I feel. Thank you, Apostle Binyam. That's really powerful. And there are so many scriptures that we can open up that gives you scriptural foundation for this. I mean, we have the life of Daniel as an example. He was ten times better than all of the leaders, the occultists, everything else that Babylon had. And the reason he got into that position because he was a problem solver. God will anoint you to solve problems. And, and that is one of the things that will give you influence to scale a mountain higher and higher. And the more of God's righteous people reach close to the top of that mountain, the more it begins to weaken the principalities and powers on the tops of those mountains. Because you are bringing the kingdom of God which is in you by the Holy Ghost up to the tops of those mountains. And I can't get into it but a lot of this has to do also with the ministry of king and priest. In several places, the Bible calls us kings and priests. Kings and priests after the ancient order of Melchizedek. And so, the priestly ministry is also very much needed in cooperation with the kingly ministry. Now we're all kings and priests, but some may have a greater propensity on the kingly side and some on the priestly side. And an older lady or so, 70 years old, you know, a grandma, she says, well, how can I get in this? I'm, I'm, I'm too old. I don't want to start a business or whatever. Oh, but she's an intercessor. She loves to pray. She loves to spend four or five hours on our knees on prayer. Most business guys, even Christian business guys, are probably not going to do that. You know, maybe except special times. They're out there building something. But they need these intercessors to help clear the spiritual demonic atmosphere. And to pray for them to keep their heart clean as they're climbing the mountain. Because you're not going to be a representative for Jesus on the business mountain if you're doing it in a just in, in the same corrupt way that corrupt business people do it. You'll not be able to really fully. I mean, if, if you're already compromising to demons on the way up on the mountain, how are you going to be a representative for Jesus on top of the mountain? So really, how do we navigate this? As, 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 as cunning, as wise as snakes. Yet keeping our hearts pure. As a dove. Because there are wolves out there. Jesus said, I'm sending you out among the wolves. What do the wolves want to do? They want to gobble you up, eat you up. 
So, you have to be wise as a snake. Keep your heart pure as a dove. As you navigate a mountain. Because you will always have challenges to compromise. But every time you say no to a compromise, you say yes to Jesus, your authority, your anointing, on that mountain has just increased. And you push back the powers of darkness through the principle of obedience. So these are things that have to be taught to the people of God. And it's a powerful thing that God is giving us. See, unless those mega churches also begin to teach this so that their people can really be change agents out there. Everyone's just happy, clappy coming to church on Sunday. But not thinking about doing any mission, ministry, anything on their mountain out there. So nothing is changing out there. The devil just keeps doing what he wants to do. In the areas in America, where they have some of the biggest mega churches, when statisticians have, have done statistics of the area, they found that nothing changed as far as poverty rates, uh, education of the poor, uh, um, Teenage pregnancy, divorce, all of those things that, that really are systemic things from the devil. But if you've got a church of 10,000, for sure that area of your city should be changed in some way. You know, same thing in Nigeria. But Nigeria, I'm you. You have huge. Tremendous mega churches. But when you look at some of the statistics, you know, you don't see a lot of change. I know some of them are doing great humanitarian work. But, but there is a challenge. You can have a Holy Ghost prayer meeting where one million people show up. In but yet, very little changes out there. And you have pastors, some churches, they're happy to take the ties of the drug dealers and gangsters out there that come to their church. Oh, pastor, bless my business. What's your business? I sell drugs. I do this, I do that. Oh, okay, well, let me bless you, man. Let me take the ties. So the corruption comes in the church also. I'm not saying every church, I'm saying there, but this is a very well known fact in Nigeria. Nigeria. So you have great churches, you have great ministries, doing tremendous things for the Lord. But you don't see it trickle down that much to bring change to society. Which means there's something missing. There's a misconnect or disconnect somewhere. Same thing in America. I'm not, America. Pick, I'm not just picking on Nigeria. We have the same issues in America. So there's a shift that has to take place in the church for the kingdom. And it's a paradigm shift here. It's a mentality shift here. We all love revival. I love revival. Revival is wonderful. Revival is the you know. Saints get revived. So what you win people to Christ. So what you want to say But when we have revival, revival can see we also need to have reformation. Revival. Revival and plus 
revival reformation because when you have revival revival you have an open heaven it's easy to get people saved so watching madan qallal it's easy to get people healed delivered etc and if was so lela neger ndihonu qallal no but it's also much easier to change the mentalities and mindsets of people ye hizbunum hasab amro meqeyerim qallal no when the heavens are open samaya sikafatu to change their mindset asasabacho le meqeyer to bring forth a new wine skin addis ye hoyna qum adana mamtat for a new generation la addis tawlid revivals come and go Revival imatal ihedal. They can last a few months. Yetawsana war li qoy ichilal. Or they can last a few years. Yetawsana amat li qoy ichilal. Azusa street was a revival. Azusa street revival neber. Lasted only you know, about 12 years or so. Asra wala tamat yallu ye qoyo. But it was also a reformation movement. Kin demo tahaddiso minkesakase neber. We are still enjoying the fruits of today. Ahunem yezan inkesakase pray yebellano. Because it was an apostolic reformation movement. Yahawariawi tahaddiso inkesakase yalle. That brought forth a new wine skin. Addis yo ina komada yemata there are over 900 million tongue talking spirit filled pentecostal full gospel believers in the earth today ba'alam zuriya 900 million yemiyonu melsan yeminnagero bemenfes kulus yetemollu christianos ba'alam zuriya allu so when we pay the price wa gaun sen kafel prayer and fast በመጾም በመጸለይ all of those things to see revival come in revival see met alamayet it's also very important demo betam asfelagi no revivals revivalochi have apostolic input hawariawi hono migabam in terms of seeing okay what are the things now that god wants to introduce to the church egziaber ahun be betekstaus min lias gba ifelaga what to do addis min liyareg ifelaga for a new wine skin addis yo ina qumada new generation la addis tawlid that even when the the revival begins to slow down revival hun kwan biqannis that that reformation that wine skin keeps expanding ያ ታድሶ ያ የወይና ቁም አዳግን መስፋቱ ይከተላል ወሌላ ትውልድ አይ አንደርስታንድ ዳት ዘ ፔንተኮስታል ሙቭመንት ኢን ኢትዮጵያ ኢትዮጵያ ውስጥ የመንፈስክሩስ እንቅስቃሴ ስታርትድ ሂር ኢን አዋሳ እዚ አዋሳ እንደጀመረ አቃለው ፓስተር ጌቱ ፓስተር ጌቱ ይነገር ይነበረ ከተገደቃችሁ ፊት አንድ So there's something about this city. ስለዚህ ከተማ አንድ ለየት ያለ ነገር አለ. Something about this place. ስለዚህ ስፍራ ለየት ያለ ነገር አለ. God wants to birth new things. እግዚአብሔር አዲስ ነገር መውለድ ይፈልጋል. God wants to ignite new things. አዲስ ነገር ማቀጣጠል ይፈልጋል. Something about the people and the city. በዚህ ከተማ ስላሉ ሰዎች አንድ ለየት ያለ ነገር አለ. Seem to be maybe more open. የተከፈቱ ህዝብ ናቸው. To the things of God. ለእግዚአብሔር ነገር. To the new things of God. ለእግዚአብሔር አዲስ ነገር. Moving in the spirit. bloody soon to say okay show it to me from the word kekalu asaye okay i see it in the word bekalu ya ya okay let's run with it ishi abren need him move with it hallelujah let's see what god will do hallelujah exaber emiyader gorun nimerket to say yes to it ishi yemil metaz say hallelujah hallelujah abenu say hallelujah hallelujah I'm just going to ask one or two man of god what, what do you think about this praise god thank you very much sir you know i'm about when when you are talking is like you are just doing me injections you are just injecting me that i should do more than what i'm doing now. you know it's a wake up call the word of god is new every day as i seated here i'm taking my notes and i believe my word personally has changed and because i've already changed i will change the others we will hear our testimony in this land Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. Pastor Ulu and the last name Adebanjo, Nigerian. Oh, you weren't offended by what I said. Were you offended by what I Do I do I have to do I have to repent to you here? But you know what I'm talking about, right? You know what I was talking about, right? I've been to Nigeria a couple of times. Uh up in the north in Kafanchan. Uh uh Apostle Apostle Emmanuel Kure. I preached Buko in Lagos. You know him? Amen. Bless you. Bless you. What about you? Sir? Good, sir. Oh, thanks so much. Uh, you know uh, something what entered into my spirit uh, when I'm receiving the word of God. you went throughout the world you mentioned that i went to 94 countries preaching this the gospel of this life just back 
something into my spirit today. You are preaching about this, about the seven mountains. It, you know, there is something to do in this land, Ethiopia. That's in every government offices, in the education system, in the media, in the arts, Christians are not participated in it. You know, uh, you say that, they say, the politics is the dirty game. Then after they say that, this is a dirty game. Finally, a dirty people hijack the politics. And they give us a dirty nation, a dirty educational system, a dirty media, and uh, then the peoples we went to in a very poverty uh, manner. Something you, you said over here, what I'm writing that you, you say that there are millions of members in the congregation, but they are not ready to do the things of the ministry. You say that you, if a happy, clip, clappy people, they are not doing the ministry right. So, thank you, sir. Amen. 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 One more. And then the keyboard player can get on the keyboard, please. Thank you so much, Sir Kubo Kuchin. What I learned from this meeting is God truly is progressive. With every generation, God's move is progressive and He's willing to work in a very dynamic way with every generation. We should not hold back to our old tradition. But we, we should be willing to change with the move of God at every season and be willing to change, to unlearn our old things, to relearn to new things, and to move with the Spirit of God, with His guidance. So, so. Amen. Amen.